right, thank you for watching this video. I'm Don Ford, this is Progressive Insider. Got something really, really special for you today. Uh, there's a lot of excitement going on and curiosity and, you know, random anger about what happened, what's happening in Nevada right now to 2020, but also looking back to 2016 and what went on because a few of the stories have gone on to become somewhat like legend uh, and where one side, the Bernie Kratz say, that no chairs were thrown and there was no situation of anything. And on the other side, the Hillary people say it was a riot. There were chairs everywhere, chairs and chairs and chairs. So we tracked down someone a little special. We saw a video where a chair did actually get picked up and immediately grabbed and sat down. And uh, Jonas, I feel like more people should know your name because you are the person <laughs> that, that, did, that can confirm uh, the situation. So please. Yeah, well, it's thankfully we're here in 2020 with a uh, landslide Bernie victory. Um, in many ways, it's vindication and um, uh, catharsis of sorts from what went down in 2016 and how all the rules changes. Uh, yes, I am indeed, I guess, the guy who stopped the guy that wanted to throw a chair. Uh, and like you said, it happened really quickly and then it was over. <laughs> it was not even a thing. Um, Basically, a guy behind me, uh, after Roberta Lang, uh, said that the convention was over. She had been gone for like, I forget, like an hour, an hour and a half, and nothing was happening on stage. And all of a sudden, she comes up with a gavel and says, this convention's over, Clinton wins, boom, bangs the gavel, and then leaves the stage. And that's when the guy behind me like, picked up a chair, and I noticed him coming towards the stage and just stopped him in, in his tracks. And we got the chair down real quick, and then uh, somebody else gave a hug to him and just like they hugged it out and were like, it was really an upsetting moment for everybody involved. Um, and yeah, that, that was, uh, th that was, yesterday was a huge, huge um, vindication for people uh, who have been supporting Bernie in Nevada, uh, people like myself who just knew that his message was connecting with working people. I think he, last I saw, he won five of the seven strip caucuses uh, which if you don't know, if you're not from Vegas, um, uh, casino workers are allowed to caucus at their work sites. So they don't have to, um, they don't have to leave their jobs. They can caucus there. And last, uh, in 2016, I think all those caucus sites went to Clinton and there were some weird shenanigans too, with people being like funneled. Yeah. Through. Yeah. When people talk about the, uh, worker, the reed machine coming in, that's the, where they bring in the, the workers from the, uh, the, the maid unions and all the other services that go on and they give them paid time to fill those caucuses. And that didn't happen this time. Uh, from all indications. Well, I think that it, there was a good, they actually, this time, and I haven't seen much, uh, by the way of shenanigans. I, I'm, I'm actually in Brazil right now. I'm not, I'm not on the ground, so I don't know, but <laughs> everything that I, everything that I, all my friends said about how it went, everything went pretty smoothly, everything, uh, there was nothing really, uh, you know, obviously they do the deck of cards things when it's a tie, and and uh, I, one person I know was in a caucus where that happened, where they, he, um, Bernie pulled the higher card, and so therefore he got more delegates. Um, so that, I mean, there's, there's all that stuff that, that, that in 2016 seemed to be an issue, uh, was not an issue this time. I, it seems like it was, and, and it, it's, the landslide victory that Bernie got yesterday, uh, I think, is testament to the fact that it, we got our, you know, Bernie people got our people into positions within the party that, that you know, we could be, have a fair uh, primary caucus, whatever, you know. That's actually what I want to talk about because, you know, you aren't on the ground right now. And, and even though I do really enjoy hearing your commentary on this, I want to actually talk about with you something really, really important coming up. Because in a caucus state, in any state, the process does not stop on caucus night. As a matter of fact, they are still tabulating votes. And this is a not a winner-take-all system. This is a proportional system. So we need every vote. Right. But also there's the convention process and the state convention process was the ultimate end of a series of conventions that right. had shenanigans the whole time. And this is what Nevada, right. even with the win, there's room for finagling. And so let's, let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk sure. about 2016. Well, 2016 went down. Uh, so Clinton won, I think it was like 53, 47, the initial caucus, the percentages. Um, and then, and then what, the Bernie camp did, what we did is, uh, so now, so that's the initial caucus. And then, then we goes to the Clark County caucus. Um, and and that's, if the you count, that's the county caucus. That's the county in Vegas. So everybody knows. Right. Clark County is the county which Vegas is in. And it's 75% of the state. 
is it lives in Clark County. So it's basically, you know, three quarters of the state. that lives It's like in that in Reno, basically, right? Right, correct. And then, then there's other uh, rural uh, towns as well. Um, so yeah, so we went from the initial caucus in February, and then I think it was like April was the Clark County Convention. And that's where we used the rules of, of the uh, Democratic uh, State Party to um, flood that state convention with um, uh, uh, um, delegates. So you could you, right. You, so what you're talking about was just so I'm going to fill in, I'm going to fill in your holes. Please. And we talked about this on the phone. So I, you know, we're on the same page. So uh, we, what, what happened was, and I'm going to interview, the, uh, actually, I was just thinking about this, that I, I know the person who was there uh, at the caucus site when the two busloads of people came off at the very end of the, because the caucus is in 2016, we're at night, right? They were No, no, uh, the, the, they were during the day. Okay. Um, they, they started in the morning, uh, usually 10 o'clock. And okay. we, we flooded the, the Clark County. Oh. I just realized it doesn't matter. The shot was inside a casino. Everything looks like night. No, 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 no. Okay, so, so there's, there's, there's two things, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't tell if it's night or day when you're in a Vegas casino, for sure. It just occurred to me that that's why I yeah. think that's why I have that time wrong. Just, just for clarity. So there's the initial caucus, and then there's the Clark County caucus, and then there's the state uh, right. convention. So, right, uh, right. So going, going back, though, we had the two busloads of people that showed up at the one, uh, I think it was a strip caucus, and they did not have... That was uh, the state convention. Was that the... No, was that... Okay. No, that was the state convention. Okay, let, uh, let, me, let me go back in time a little bit. So... Sure. Uh, in order of, of process, it's initial Clark County and then state convention. Sure. So Clark, Clark County, we were able to, to flood that uh, Clark County convention with Bernie delegates. Right. In the rules, um, we were allowed to do that. And that's what Obama did in 08. He flipped... He lost the initial caucus, but then... Hillary's people didn't show up again in 2016. Right, 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 right. And we were able to flip the results of the Clark County uh, results because we had more delegates present. And uh, uh, yeah, my, my, my understanding of how that worked was the busloads of people didn't have valid ballots and that yeah, left the delegate seats open. Let me, let me clarify. So the busloads of people uh, was at the Flamingo, which is what the okay. state convention was, right? At, that, at a private casino, which was horrible. Uh, because there was no parking, uh, it was on a Saturday, like there was literally no parking in the casino. We had Bernie people showing up and they couldn't park and they didn't, uh, they got there after nine o'clock and so they weren't admitted. Um, so that was the state convention. That was the final uh, draw. This is after we had already, uh, after uh, Clinton initially won the initial caucus. So, okay, so, so the, the, the county caucus was held in a, in a uh, public uh, uh, um, convention hall. And then the state convention was held in a private casino at the Flamingo. And that's where the state convention is where we had two busloads of people who nobody really knew who they were. And they were all, they were just kind of ushered in. Um, it was really strange in the state convention because they had like two credential lines. One was for Sanders and one was for Clinton. It wasn't just like an all general. Yeah, this is a new story for me. This is a different busloads of people story than the one that I was familiar with. After the initial caucus, the Clark County Convention was a major victory for um, the grassroots uh, Bernie supporters and well, the campaign as well. Because ultimately what happened is we flipped Nevada from the results from the initial caucus, which Obama also did in 08. And I think that the Clinton campaign, having <laughs> seen the results of the Clark County co uh, Convention getting flipped uh, a second time, they were like, oh, hell no. And so they shut down, um, they, they basically um, said, uh, they changed the rules midstream and said, we're gonna, no, we're going back to the initial results of the first caucus and then that's that. And, uh, and, and that was the one thing that's actually was exciting, exciting about caucusing. And honestly, caucusing as, as sort of a pain in the ass as it is, that was like one cool part of it is that you, it showed commitment, each candidate's um, uh, supporter's commitment over time. So the initial caucus was February, and then April, if that, like Clinton, she, she her popularity was declining and, it was, and Bernie's was rising. So we were able to flip the results based on the excitement and energy of, that people had for Bernie. And so they showed up at the Clark Con County uh, Convention en masse, and, uh, and we were able to flip the results. And then the state party, which was, now we know, um, was basically an apparatus of the Clinton campaign in 2016, the state party, um, they were just like, 
no, hell no, we're shutting this down. We don't want, we can't have these results flipped. Um, we have to anoint our candidate. <laughs> uh, and so that's where, that's where weird stuff started happening at, and rules were being changed um, to not, um, yeah, like rules about, you know, how to protest, how to petition, how to, um, you know, like basically there was that the first initial vote um, was held uh, like the, the yays or the nays, whether they were going to adopt these new rules. Basically, they became Roberta's, what was it, Roberta's rules? Is that right? Yeah, Is Roberta's that, rules of orders. Instead of, instead of uh, Robert's rules of orders, it's right, Roberta's right. rules of order. So basically, they were, they were throwing out Robert's rules of order, and um, basically, Roberta Lang would be the be all end all of, um, of, the, of her say, would basically, she would, if she said Clinton wins, bangs the gavel and walks off and then Clinton wins. And then that's Yeah, that. in, in, in the video with the chair, uh, it's next to another woman who is very familiar with the rules. And she explains how she didn't ask for a proper quorum and didn't do a bunch of things to close the meeting. And technically she hadn't followed the thing and she hadn't removed the rules either, right? And so, right. yes, you can remove the rules. That's the thing that's in Robert's Rules of Order. It's kind of what makes Robert's Rules of Order a little sketchy is that when you feel lazy, you're like, let's just get rid of these and do whatever we want. And that's, that's right. kind of what she tried to do, but without even taking that step. Yeah, um, so it was a very, it was a very strange uh, convention and ended really badly and foreshadowed uh, what was gonna happen at the national convention as well. Um, and so- Which we all know went very smoothly. Yeah, it was just like, you know- <laughs> Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry. Yeah, no. It's all good. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was that, definitely that is not what happened. No, no, uh, no. Yeah, it was definitely foreshadowing for the convention. We just did an interview with Jason Eno talking about uh, what, our experience working on the delegate strategy. And the moment we realized we had gotten all the delegates there, we'd done all this stuff. And the moment we realized that the phones that we needed in order to do the process were not going to be on. And mm. it was not, the process was not intact. And that's why we're trying to talk to people like you to uncover the different aspects of where the process goes wrong so that it can actually something can be done about it because there is a time to change these things absolutely i mean and it looks like um nevada the results yesterday everything went relatively smoothly as they can go in a caucus again there's massive turnout in the early vote and i think the early vote really helped bernie um it's a lot of people who work and have families can't go on a saturday from 10 to 12 I mean, that's it's like prime family time. It's prime, you know, if you have kids, it's really difficult. The kids are always doing something on Saturday, blah, blah, blah. And so I think the early vote actually, um, I was worried about how influenced those numbers could be. But from all indications, it looks like it was fair. Yeah, there's only one example I've seen of a situation that looks like someone did some sketchy math. Like the type of math that was done in mass everywhere in every caucus state in like Nevada and in Iowa, all because it was trained right. to the, like the bad way to do things. That's not fair, and you make it slowly whittle down the way you want it to give your candidate a preference. For those rules yeah. and bylaws member or something from the DNC, because they had DNC members running caucus sites um, um, in Nevada. Oh, I know for a fact. I, I know that the New Hampshire State Party chair was there. They had the rules and bylaws uh, person. So this one particular caucus site, there's a rules and bylaws, because a lot of those, uh, having worked with them on the superdelegate reform, I can speak very mm -hmm. firsthand that they are sketchy. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out who that person is, because it seems like the incidences were mostly uh, singular individuals as opposed to a larger, uh, you know, nefarious plan like 2016 when Roberta Lang was in charge. Right. Well, that's the difference, right? 2016, there was the Clinton machine, and it was literally a machine. It was one, uh, the DNC and the state parties were run basically by people in our campaign, and, uh, and as we found out, and it was just basically one and the same. Uh, and now, because there's, there's more candidates, you know, there's, 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 more, there's less uh, chicanery uh, for, you know, yeah, there's more than just one side watching one side. All the sides are watching each other because they're all fighting for second place. Right, <laughs> right, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that's, that's, you... that, that works in the benefit of uh, a fair process. Um, you know, I can't speak to what happened in Iowa, but like I was, I was really dreading the same kind of situation in Nevada. Um, from all indications, all my friends said it was fair, easy, uh, as easy as a caucus can be. Uh, and so... Uh, 
That's a good what thing. What are your thoughts on the chair there? He's a young guy, uh, he's six years younger than me. It kind of freaks mm -hmm. me out. That, but I mean, he seems like, uh, it seems like he lost control of the state shortly after being elected. And then when all the Iowa stuff happened, I feel like he like grabbed control, the reins of the horse. Mm. And like, everyone was like, oh, this is bad, this is bad. I'm like, no, he's just trying to figure it out. He's trying to figure out how to derig it. What are, your, what are your thoughts on him? Well, I don't know him personally. I'm actually, I don't, even, I don't even know who he is, quite honestly. But I think uh, that was uh, a big question mark. I know we wanted Nevada, I think we were all hoping that Nevada would not be a total cluster bomb. Um, I think that it turned out, uh, I, I, I honestly don't have any thoughts other than like, if that's what he did, if he needed to grab the reins and, and say, we're not gonna be Iowa, then that's awesome. Like then if he wanted to be fair, that's, that's great too. I think that the landslide that we saw is probably, I mean, is like probably what happened in Iowa without some, some you know, messed up, you know, uh shenanigans being played around i mean i, I think oh yeah the state delegate math in iowa we've been trying to unwind and figure it out and right just, nobody knows like it's it's like one of those <laughs> no, mysteries no like what and we'll hell? never know we'll never know the truth of the vote in iowa in the same way in 2016 we all know without getting into the details right now the vote was handled inaccurately a lot of places and right. we'll never know the true results of 2016's election and i feel like right. The same thing is true of Iowa. And I think that other state party chairs like Nevada, they don't want to repeat that mistake. So I'm hoping we, we're still waiting, I think, for the last, at the time of this recording, we're still waiting for 40% of the results. There's still a lot of room for, you know, what'd you say, yeah. chicanery or what? <laughs> <laughs> chicanery, but I was trying to say, uh, you know, fuckery, but uh, oh well. Yeah, sure. we can say yeah. that. It's okay. It was deep. Um, no, so, um, so where... So where do people go from here? So we have the county convention coming up. And yeah. I, I have my whole I have my whole theory. We'll close with that so that they want to end it and edit it. I'm just gonna explain to you what I know that I feel like maybe is, is the in the story. But um, people are moving forward. Right. They're saying, okay, I need to do this thing. I need to help Bernie get more delegates, which you're saying very openly that can happen at this phase right. of the process, depending on who shows up more, you can get more delegates, right? Correct. From here on out, we stay engaged uh, at the county level. Uh, we show up, uh, we get all our delegates. We make sure that we have our list of delegates, that people that um, signed up to be county delegates and that everyone shows up. Um, you can also show up, I believe, um, if you can't make it, you can show up as an alternate. Um, and it's always just good to have a bunch of people there to just step in if, if necessary. Um, which is what we did in 2016, and we're able to flip the state for Bernie. I guess the one sort of, if, if we're like paranoid, the one thing they could possibly do is change the rules because apparently that happens. <laughs> it's a thing that happens. <laughs> uh, apparently, apparently that I, happened. So we gotta be very, it's very fresh. Yeah, and maybe, and maybe Mike Bloomberg can give Nevada uh, Democratic Party $5 million and they can, they can change it again to put him in, I don't know, I'm joking, but um, you know what I mean? Like, I think, I'm pretty sure there's a cap. I'm pretty yeah. sure there is a cap. Yeah, I yeah. God, I hope so. So, I, whatever. I mean, I think that the, the, right now the thing is to really uh, stay focused on the county convention, which I believe happens in April. And then the state convention, I think is like May or something. So um, that's, uh, it's, it's, it's really the first of three steps in Nevada for finalizing the results of the caucus. The one thing I will say that's different than 2016 is, after Ber uh, Obama in 08 and Bernie in 16 flipped the results of the initial caucus day, um, that they basically did away with that in, in the rules. So you cannot, the results of the caucus day are the results. So could they change it to try to boost Biden? I mean, they could, but he lost so, so massively. Or Buttigieg, I mean, and, or, you know, they lost so massively, there's no way that they, and they don't have the ground, the grassroots. That's the thing. It's like they don't have the grassroots. Well, also, when the full tally is done, uh, they are uh, going to get the numbers are going to get reworked, and all these people below fifteen get dropped off, and the, right. the, the new the viable vote or valid vote or whatever it's called is established. Yeah. And when that happens, Bernie's numbers are going to go up. Right. So 
Um, so that's sort of that he should actually get above 51%. If they stay the way they are right now, like right now we're at, uh, I got it right here. We're at uh, 46%, which is like, it's crazy how he's at 39.3% of the final vote, but then the state congressional delegates are at 46%. And unlike Iowa, where hmm. Pete took a big, it took a big gain and, and Bernie suddenly like took a hit, Buttigieg, uh, he went from an 18.4 uh, to a 15.3 after the state right. party did their math. And I'm not so sure. Do you, you know if it's if he's under 15? Is he not? Does he not get any delegates? Well, it depends on the congressional districts. He has to be viable by congressional district. So you can be below 15, but have 15 in one district, and that's technically enough to be. So you could, if you really wanted to be a pain, you could just make yourself viable in one congressional district. Like put your entire presidential campaign to get the one delegate that gives you leverage. Yeah, right. <laughs> not a great strategy, though. There's a lot of weird stuff you can do now that we're like unwinding how this really works. But yeah. um, so would you prefer if they did away with the caucus? I mean, do you like the Like, what's your ultimate final thoughts on this? I, this is a really tricky question. Um, I go back and forth. Um, I think that I liked the caucus better when there was the ability to, on the county level, flip the results of the initial one based on the energy and momentum of the candidates. Um, because in 2016, initial caucus, uh, Clinton was kind of, um, she was looking like she was going to take, run away with it. And then as after the caucus in February, she started having a, a, a decline and, Ber and Bernie was actually surging. So it kind of, it kind of showed you what would have happened had, uh, those results been adopted and Bernie had won Nevada. I mean, he was, he was doing, he was on an upward trajectory. And I think we see that, um, that it's a really tricky question because I, in one way, I think that the reason why Nevada is first in the West is because Harry Reid set it up so that um, if, if we caucus, then we can be first. But if we were to do a primary, we'd be, you know, uh, um, further on in the schedule. Um, it does carry a lot of weight to be one of the first contests. Uh, and I think that Nevada is also an extremely diverse state and there's all sorts of, you know, there's like workers of all sorts of nationalities and, you know, and, and, and it's just, it's a, it's a real like worker centric state. And there's um, the culinary union, like they didn't, them, them not a, um, backing anybody, I think spoke volumes because I think that the, the, the top brass in the culinary union probably wanted to endorse uh, Biden, but um, their members were like, hell no. We, you know, I think that the, the, the casino sites that I mentioned where there was caucusing, the, the workers there were, you know, heavily Latin, you know, and that's, that's an amazing, uh, that's, that's an amazing thing about the campaign, the Bernie campaign in 2020 is that all the outreach and, and like stories that I've been hearing of like young uh, Latin um, Latinos went like for over 50% to Bernie. I mean, Latinos generally went over 50% to Bernie on the initial um, uh, polling uh, going into the caucuses. And then, and then these young people were talking to their their parents and their grandparents saying, we, you know, got to got a caucus for Bernie, you know, for me, please do this for my future, you know, and uh, he, his message to the Latin community is landing, man. It's like really landing. Um, but back to your question of caucusing versus primary, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at an open door to that because I, I, as frustrating as the caucus is, I think if we have early voting, if we keep the early voting option, I'm, I'm more open to, to keeping the caucus, um, especially because Nevada is a diverse state. It's really, um, it, it's, it's really important that, you know, we see a, a snapshot of, uh, of a state that can reflect the rest of the country. And I think that's um, like that Nevada in a lot of ways is that. Um, so I, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna keep it open. I'm gonna, I'm just keeping an open mind. I, I always take people's information about like, like, yes, it would be easy to go and just show up and wait in line and, and vote. Um, uh, but I don't know, there's something about caucusing, which, uh, and I, maybe I'm gonna get some heat, some heat from my friends about this, because <laughs> I had to show up and, uh, and, and you know, spend hours. You're like, but you're not even here to caucus. Where? <laughs> yeah, I know, like, what are you talking about? No, so, uh, so I got a question for you. Here's my yeah. thought. I just feel like we're so close to this being ranked choice voting. Like, mm. it's so like, we're right on the doorstep of it. And I feel like this is like, if we just started calling caucusing in-person ranked choice voting, 
-hmm. and we adjusted the rules of the caucus to be more like ranked choice voting so they're more fair and do away with all this crazy math and complex shit uh even though delegate does have to get proportion to the delegates and that still needs to happen um mm -hmm. but it, the way it's supposed to work is it's supposed to give the minority votes an extra delegate and give the boost to the people with less so they have, they have a larger voice in the process not give the you know the leader anyways um yeah. so uh uh but i feel like because you have early voting right so people are standing in line voting and then you have this thing that's basically ranked choice voting if we just call it the coxing in-person ranked choice voting mm. i feel like we would just eventually get ranked choice voting yeah that's uh, a good point i i i really don't um well, this is coming up I'm right now. I, this is happening. I, this happened while we're on this interview. I had this thought while you're talking about it. Yeah, well, that's essentially what the early voting was. It was ranked choice voting. Uh, yeah, that's essentially, I saw this, those, those uh, things that were so complicated, and they did end up kind of going uncommitted uh, in some districts, did actually mess things up. Like it made things made things more manipulatable because people chose Bernie in one round and they didn't choose in the other two and they were able to finagle that into losing votes for Bernie somehow. Oh, because, really? Uh, okay, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's I, why that's why the system as it is did give this room because it's just this one case that we found. But does he's I, I suspect I know who did it. Because like, mm. there's only one person in the party who's smart enough to pull off something like this. And he's evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe you take him out for a drink. And... <laughs> oh, yeah, no, take him out for a, a no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> take out. Okay, okay, so I want to share with you what I know. Sure. Take it or leave it. My guys can edit it out. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, I, they never do, so it's just lots of me saying, you could edit this out. It's like, everyone's like, here it comes. Um, so. I had a friend at a caucus site, can't tell you where, gonna interview her, and she did have a videotape of all these people coming out on caucus night, coming into a particular caucus in Clark County, two busloads of people who did not have ballots, they did not stop to get ballots. They ran right past them. Uh, are you talking about the state convention? No, no, I'm talking about at the actual original caucus. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the original caucus, there was, uh, uh, they, they brought in two busloads of caucus people, uh, they were joking at them being from like Arizona or New Mexico or something like that, but I don't think that's true. There's plenty of people in Vegas, but they never stopped to get valid ballots. So uh, we, we uh, they videotaped, they did whatever. They caucused, they won that caucus site overwhelmingly. Those people never signed back up. When the county convention happened, and I remember when the announcement was made, and I, 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 I mean, I was involved at this point, uh, that the ballots were found to not be valid. Mm. And that was what left the door open for Bernie people to fill those county delegate seats. Gotcha. And so, and so that's why, um, you know, people being involved and being able to motivate people is so important because uh, that week they also tried to do it with Missouri and we motivated people and we ended up not only taking Missouri and they weren't able to flip it back because they don't have the caucus process the way that you guys do, uh, mm. where they could go back and forth with it. But we actually took all the DNC seats. Mm. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I interviewed uh, Curtis Wild, and uh, he explained how he ended up becoming a DNC delegate and uh, the whole process and right. what happened in Missouri. And it's very similar to your story. And it's, it's just, it's fascinating how it all comes together. And these busloads of people we talk about, this is the progressive nightmare. This is the thing progressive elections, we all, no, ha, huh, they have busloads of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I, obviously those busloads of people didn't show up for Biden or Buttigieg. Uh, no, or they didn't. They didn't. I didn't see any of them. No. So, uh, so yeah. I guess, uh, you know, the, 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 I think that it went off, uh, as best as it could. Um, obviously, there's going to be mistakes. One thing I will say about caucusing, though, that I found personally uh, wonderful is I was a precinct captain for Bernie, so I got everyone in my neighborhood to come out on the initial caucus day, and then I made sure I kept all of the, um, the delegates, people who wanted to sign up to go to Clark County and be delegates. I put myself down as a delegate, so then I was a, a Clark County delegate for Bernie. And then at the Clark County, um, people who wanted to sign up to be uh, delegates at the state level could be could be state delegates and I, I did the same thing and I got on the list for to be a state delegate for Bernie and then same thing at the state delegation uh, uh, state convention I signed up to be a national delegate for Bernie and so uh, I, I, I almost missed it by a couple votes um, in hindsight I'm glad I didn't go to the, the, the national convention <laughs> because it went so smoothly 
Because <laughs> um, I that's, 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 sorry, you got me with my own joke. I already thought oh, it was funny. It's it was, it was true though. <laughs> <laughs> well, always remember the 2016 uh, Democratic Convention as the uh, epitome of smoothness. Oh, well, actually, you know, that's actually not the worst way to look at it because it shouldn't have been smooth and they just literally ground it down until it was. Yeah. It was like fitting a square block into a round hole and yeah, so uh, we still needed that square block for the general election. Totally. So that's the thing, right? So the, 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 I, I felt empowered by the caucus because in a primary, I'm not sure how I could become a national delegate for Bernie. I mean, that may, that's because I live in a caucus state, so I know that process. Um, you just go from one, one level to the next level and, you, um, and you'll be able to talk uh to people about why you support your candidate and and that's that's a great thing i think um so it's it is it is actually a great thing every state's a little different uh i'm not going to give you the whole speech but just for yep. everyone who's watching this that is curious what we're saying caucus states do it one way primary states either have elections or they actually have a similar caucus process or some combination of caucus and primary process states like new york you have to be on the ballot and well well in advance states like pennsylvania you have to be chosen by the campaign before you can even make it on the ballot both right. of those states require a large amount of signature drives, but those signature drives are also good for boosting the candidate in that area. True. So it's really, really important if you're going to be a delegate, you be someone who are, you're prepared to canvas, to knock on doors, to get yeah. out people out there to know your name. I spend so long on the computer and I do tons of work with, with the delegates, make sure the delegates get where they need to go. I don't necessarily do the work in my community to be a delegate at the same level that other people do. And it's just the different roles we all have to fill and supportive and that's what guest passes are for so uh okay, yeah so that's that's one thing i felt empowered by the caucus process uh in 2016 uh as as, as disempowered i felt uh knowing thinking that the democratic party uh was going to give us a fair shot and this is going to be a fair uh you know my own naivete going into it 2016 uh and it completely that that as as disempowered as i was by the nevada state democratic party and their rule changes and um, uh, that, that, that terrible state convention that basically um, uh, completely uh, undercut anything that's good about uh, a democratic process. Um, I felt empowered by the caucus process itself because I was able to uh, work my way up from my neighborhood to my county to my state and be a delegate for my candidate. And I thought that was really cool. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I really, one thing I want to say, um, uh, because I got to get out to Carnival right now. I, I'm 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 late already for uh, for uh, catching. I'm in Salvador Bahia. I've got the best Carnival in Brazil. <laughs> but one thing I want to say, kind of like in closing, I guess, would be that I um, hope that everyone in other states is is working really hard for Bernie and uh, knocking on doors and calling because this if if it the final results are keep where they are right now, it's gonna be a blowout in Nevada. And if we can blow out in other states too, I think we have to get 50% um, to get, uh, was it 50% viability for the national? 50% plus one delegate. Well, there's a lot of argument over whether or not that number is 1990 or 1991. Uh, right. I think that if it's coming down to whether or not it's 1990 or 1991, the new number will be 1992. So we need to be shooting for 2020, I think is the number when you think about the, 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 thing. the real important number that we need to watch out for, and that's 1608. And the okay. number 1608 is really important because that is the least amount of delegates you can have where every automatic delegate would be necessary to uh, elect you in the second round. So if the collective establishment gets to 1608, they are now within the window where depending on how many automatics they get, but also keep in mind, everyone is unpledged on the second round. So right. just because uh, people are with uh, a candidate and, and the candidate endorsement doesn't matter, it, it's up to the delegate because the delegates represent the people in their location, not the candidate right. that they're there to vote for. That's right. why um, two things that I need to say, just I'm gonna drop in this video. Number one, we have to raise money for the delegates individually because we cannot pool money because it comes an FTC issue. And then number two, the candidates cannot give any money to them except for uh, we did give them money to the state party, but that's technically subverting the rules that are, are about electioneering. And we can't complain about other people electioneering and then turn around and electioneer ourselves, even if it's a roundabout legal, illegal way. Right, 
Right. Yeah. I think um, then everyone needs to start scrolling away some money if, if you're going to plan to be a delegate and go to the national. Yeah, no, we have three delegate fundraisers going right now. There are six awesome. confirmed delegates at the moment, uh, actual people. Uh, we are fundraising for them already. We've already raised about $1,500 collectively. So it's very exciting. So I'm going to um, uh, just say to you real fast, uh, thank you for being so fast on your feet and being here today because uh, we grabbed this interview like you grabbed that chair. It was, this was all happened very fast. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that the landslide yesterday from I just, uh, it, it, it proves that we, we have the broadest coalition of people uh, across race, across gender, uh, across you know, sexual orientation, um, workers, unions, like this, Nevada in a lot of ways I feel like in 2016, like that, like the mess that went on in the convention kind of uh, bubbled over into the mess of the national convention. And not, Nevada in a lot of ways is um, a harbinger of, of things to come. And if, if, this is, if this is the direction, if, if Bernie has this kind of momentum going forward, then I think we're in really good shape. Okay, so last question. Were there any chairs thrown at the 2016 Nevada State Convention? There were no chairs thrown. In the 2016 Nevada State Convention, there was one dude who picked up a chair. I stopped him. We put it down, hugged it out. Everything was cool. Um, no chairs. We've, we've since thought about throwing a chair or two, but you know. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> it's become a about. running joke, basically. Like now, we're yeah, like, I bet. I bet it. Uh, we'll well, now we throw a chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> okay, okay, actually, actually, that, no, no, put it down. <laughs> so back of question, back of question, did Barbara Boxer give everyone the finger? Uh, I couldn't see over people's heads, but. Oh, uh, we're gonna need to do another interview. <laughs> oh, dude, that's, that's, that was an amazing thing, way to upset a crowd, for sure. Uh, oh, yeah, to play the worst, I, worst to do that, that angry moment. She gave. Uh, All right, so, uh, Jonas Wolverton, you are a hero to the movement. More people should know your name. And frankly, we're going to make sure they do. So, uh, and also circus performer for hire around the world. Ready around to the do world. This. Yeah. Around, <laughs> around the we, world. Anytime we'll, put we need up, right? we'll put a link up. You got a website, right? Yeah, yeah. It's jonaswolverton.com. Wolverton is W-O-O-L-V-E-R-T-O-N. And uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll put a link up to whatever he has. Check it out. It's, it sounds super cool. I mean, you yeah. want to say it real fast? You got like 20 seconds? Uh, sure. I spin around in a wheel. I'm, uh, it lights up. It's got LED lights on it, too. Um, it's kind of like, like this guy, Vitruvian Man, um, spinning around in a wheel, rolling, doing all sorts of crazy acrobatic tricks. Um, we are going to need a clip of that to put in here just so that people can see. Well, it's like the diversity of the Bernie movement, right? We have right. circus performers too. And I yeah. think that that's, that it's, we shouldn't erase circus performers. Absolutely. All right. So I am Don Ford. Uh, this has been Jonas, the incredible chair catcher, uh, Wolverton. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna thank you. you my resume. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should. Chair catcher extraordinaire. Uh, I am Don Ford. This has been Progressive Insider. Thank you so much for watching this. And uh, check out some of our other videos when you get a chance. There is just a whole slew of things coming out with other uh, stories that have gone either missed or unheard that you talk about. But we are going to help bring some clarity to those stories. Uh, that's all right. That's it. You have a great night.